Frugal Crafter. Today I have some last minute Christmas DIY gift ideas for you and you totally have time to make them before the big day. We're gonna be using supplies from our sponsor, Graphic Stock. And the great thing about these supplies is that they're digital and you can get them on your computer. And I have a coupon code for you guys. It is exclusive and it's $50 off an annual membership. So that means you can get an entire year of graphic stock goodies for $49. There's over 300,000 images, and I've got to tell you, it's so easy to click through, find what you want, sort it in different project folders, and then when you're ready to print them off and make your project, it is a snap. I got everything ready for the project, so I'm going to show you in about 20 minutes. So let's go down to the craft room, and I'll show you how it's done. For our first project, we're gonna make some decorative coasters using some inexpensive tiles from the hardware store. Now, whenever I work on ceramic or glass, I like to clean it first by wiping it down with some rubbing alcohol. As soon as I saw this artwork on graphic stock, I knew it would be wonderful for coasters or ornaments. And since I had a ton of white tiles left over from a remodeling project, I decided that they would be perfect for coasters. Now I just have an inkjet printer, so I had to treat my paper so that I'd be able to decoupage it. So um, right after I printed it, I dried it with my heat tool and then I sprayed it with clear spray paint to make sure that that inkjet ink would set so I'd be able to decoupage it. Now I'm simply cutting apart the pieces so that I can decoupage them to my coasters. I experimented with a couple different ways of doing this, but this technique gave me the best results. So what you want to do is squirt a little bit of your decoupage medium, and I'm using Mod Podge Matte Finish. You want to put some on both the tile and spread it around, and you also want to paint some on the back of the paper as well. Now this is going to make your paper be very pliable, make it stretch. It's also going to ensure that it makes contact with every portion of the tile. Now one I did where I just put the glue on the tile and then pressed the dry paper to it, and when it dried it looked fine at first but then as it dried I got wrinkles in it so I don't want that to happen to you make sure you put the decoupage media or glue on both surfaces so that it will bond well now another trick that I learned was to take like an old credit card or gift card and spread out the, you you kind of use it as a squeegee to to press that paper really smoothly against the tile that really helps in giving you a professional look now, after you get that all spread out, you're going to want to put a coat of glue on top or your decoupage medium or whatever you're using to glue this down. And because we had sprayed it with a clear spray paint beforehand, none of that ink is going to bleed. So that is just wonderful. And now you know how to decoupage things you printed off on your inkjet printer at home. After your coasters are dry, you want to put some felt bumpers on the bottom so they don't scratch your table. Simply use four furniture protectors and put one in each corner of your tile. And I like to kind of get it on the raised part just to make sure that nothing is going to scuff your table and you're all set. Here's the mistake coaster I was telling you about, the one that I didn't put the adhesive on the back of the paper as well. And you can see how it dried very blotchy and I have wrinkles. So just make sure you remember to put the Mod Podge on the back of the paper as well as on the tile so you get a really good bond. And these, uh, these three came out really well and no inkjet bleeding. So I'm really happy with this. This next project is probably the easiest of the bunch, wrapped candy bars. And I wanted to show you kind of how I print out my images so I don't waste paper. So I could fit two candy bar wrappers on one eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. So since I had that extra space, I decided to print off that banner because I knew I needed two of them. So when I printed off my four wrappers, I'd get my two banners for another project all done and out of the way. And I really love using a metal edge ruler and an X-Acto knife for trimming. But if you prefer, you can use your paper trimmer as well. Oh, here's a sneak peek at what we're making. Aren't they adorable? Now the little lace trim on the edge came as a solution to a problem. When I went to size and print out my images, I forgot to set the um, a print output at 100%. Instead, it shrunk it down a little bit. So to make up for the difference, I thought it'd be really cute to take my border punch, punch some strips of red and green cardstock, and attach those to my little candy bar wraps. And turns out it's even cuter this way. So next time you make a mistake, see if you can find a way to make it an advantage. So here I have my punch strips and my printed square, which doesn't stand out very well from my white background, but you know what? It's actually in the new Pantone colors. I totally noticed that. It's like that rose quartz and serenity blue color. So trendy. Love that you can be like right on the top of the trends with these. And I'm just adding a little bit of adhesive to the edge of my punch strips to hold it onto the back of the wrapper. It looks really seamless and really pretty. And then we're simply going to wrap it around our candy bar. 
I make sure to line up the pattern on the wrapper, the really pretty part, with the front of my candy bar. And then I'm just going to pull the edges over to the back. And I'll use a little bit of adhesive to lock the edges down. And then I'm going to use a bit of washi tape. And I like this red and polka dot washi tape to kind of seal everything down. That way I know that that wrapper is not coming off until the recipient wants it to. These are so cute and they're wonderful gifts for your kids to give to their classmates or their teachers or even attach them to a gift. I mean, imagine how cute a Yankee Swap present would be if you had one of these attached to it. I know it would be the coveted Yankee Swap gift. This next project features some label designs that I found on Graphic Stock, and I just printed them off as is. I didn't do a single thing to them, and it was so easy. I cut out one of these tags by hand that said Merry Christmas, and I also cut out those two banners I showed you earlier. I thought they'd be really pretty wrapped around this glass candle. This candle smells wonderful, and I thought it'd be a wonderful gift for somebody. I simply wrapped the banner around the candle, adding glue to probably about every third pennant. Now I'm using hot glue, which is working just fine. I don't think the sides of the candle are going to get hot enough that the hot glue is going to be bothered. But the great thing about hot glue is that you can actually peel it off in the future if you want to use the container for something else. Then I lined up the next banner and started gluing it down until I got completely around the candle. Since the ends don't meet exactly here, it's a perfect place to glue my label on top. And there you go, you just made another gift in a flash. I think it looks great, and then if the recipient wants to change it out after the holidays, all they have to do is pull off the glued on paper. So pretty. You know how I hate to waste, so I have a bonus idea. I had some paper scraps laying around, so I wrapped the other two candy bars I had with them, and then I put on these labels that were left over from the label that I used on the jar. It's quick, easy, and it looks fabulous. Next, we have an ornament. My mom just got a new puppy and his name is Wrangler. And I thought it'd be really nice to make a puppy's first Christmas ornament. So I went to graphic stock and printed off a couple backgrounds and I sized them small so they would fit my acrylic ornament that I'm going to be using. And then I typed the word Wrangler in a light cream color with a brown outline right onto the paper so that when I printed it out, it would already be there. Next, I removed the paper from the back of an acrylic ornament and I pressed it onto some double-sided tape. Then I placed the clear dog bone shaped ornament sticky side down onto the paper with the Wrangler written on it. And the acrylic shape I'm using is from Punch Place Plus. They have all sorts of cool shapes you can make ornaments with. Then I simply cut around the dog bone shape. And I used a combination of scissors and an X-Acto knife to get around those curves and edges. You can use whatever you find easier. And then I traced the trimmed ornament onto the other doggy background that I printed up because I figured if I cut this paper with scissors before it's attached to the ornament, it would be much easier. And I was right, and it was a lot easier. So I carefully trimmed out the doggy bone shape and adhered it to the back of my ornament. Easy peasy. To make the ornament look a little more polished and professional, I used a gold paint pen to color the edges of the ornament. I thought it'd be a really nice touch to make kind of like a fake dog ID tag to embellish this ornament with. So I took a soft aluminum stamping blank and I used a piece of washi tape to tape it to my little portable jewelry anvil. Now I'm using a hammer and some letter stamps. And these are just metal letter stampers. You can find them at the craft store in the jewelry section just to tap on the words first Xmas 2015 because that way um, they'll remember what year they got the puppy and that it was around Christmas time and I just think that is nice for a keepsake ornament. Just remember to give it one tap and that's it. And that's all you need to do. To further enhance the design, I took a Sharpie and I just colored over, and that's just a permanent marker. Any permanent marker is fine. And I colored over my letters and then I wiped away the excess and then it really makes the letters stand out a lot better. Then I simply used a piece of gold crochet cotton to attach the tag to my ornament. And then I secured both ends together with a knot and it's ready to hang on the tree. I hope you enjoyed these last minute holiday DIY projects. And if you're gonna try any of them, let me know in the comments below which ones you're gonna try first. Special thanks to Graphic Stock for sponsoring this video. If you like any of the artwork that I used today, make sure you check them out because I got it all there. And don't forget, for a limited time only, you can get a year subscription that's normally $99 for $49. Oh yeah, they got a $50 off coupon. The link is in the video description so you can snag yours. It's exclusive just for you guys in the Frugal Crafter community. So don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.